the special relationship. So special. We bring it up at every possible opportunity, lest a transatlantic bus stop happens and the world just wouldn't make sense anymore. The dominance of Western values, the English language and the so-called Anglo-Saxon ethos of democracy and capitalism has faced down two world wars, maintained a global order and exported food, culture and the projection of a desirable way of life to all corners of the planet. The UK-US alliance is such that, despite whoever rotates in and out of 10 Downing Street or the White House, to question whether America and Britain would still be bezies is frankly farcical. At this point, we are so cross-pollinated, it can be hard to tell where one begins and the other ends, to the extent that people on both sides of the pond pour over our individual nuances with comedic glee. According to an unsourced anecdote from a supposed prime ministerial aide, Boris Johnson no longer likes the term. He's concerned it makes the UK sound needy. Far from it. The special relationship is the envy of the world. You just have to look at how Macron used to traipse around after Trump craving selfies, but is now huffing and puffing in true Gallic dander over the AUKUS naval pact. And the equally prickly sulk among the upper echelons of the EU, haughtily pulling the plug on trade talks with America to see that hanging out with the coolest kid in the playground is secretly what everyone wants to do. Either that or churlishly plot against America's demise. But the idea that the UK is somehow a junior partner doesn't necessarily ring true. However many times sneering voices in polite society tell us we're insignificant. Yes, the sheer size and might of America makes little blighty seem like a diminutive old lady. But for many Brits, there's a sense of looking across the pond at our adolescent wayward offspring with curious, loving concern as they gamble about the world, smashing into things and making bold promises. But the problem is, for a few decades, we've forgotten to regularly check in on our unruly teenager, instead getting bogged down in bureaucracy and petulance of our difficult neighbours, while occasionally making a long-distance family visit or checking in by phone when things get a bit out of hand. Perhaps we stayed away for too long. The abrupt and catastrophic departure from Afghanistan points to an America that has become well adapted to acting unilaterally. But America seems to have realised they still need an adult in the room to partner with, one of the old guard, as China starts chatting up, well, just about everyone while hogging all the toys. And their quaint, well-positioned old blighty still punches way above her weight and has thrown away the zimmer and strutted back onto the dance floor to bust a groove or two with a post-Brexit new lease of life. Not only that, emboldened and determined to make amends, the UK is now laying down the gauntlet over climate change, feathering the nest for big tech and produced the vaccine for the world during a global pandemic. Watch out, world. We're back. And America is taking notice. So will this usher in a new era in transatlantic cooperation? Well, the signals are mixed. Joe Biden allegedly didn't even pick up the phone to London as he dragged troops out of Kabul, causing everyone else to scramble in the chaotic wake. He seemingly sided with fickle friends in Europe over Northern Ireland, requiring a potted history lesson from London on the integrity of the United Kingdom. There's still no proper American ambassador in London after an awkward period where the reverse was true. And the concept of a quick and comprehensive trade deal, despite it being almost absurd that one does not already exist, is once again in the weeds. But perhaps the renewing of military vows is the most significant, as whatever we need to iron out between us is vastly eclipsed by the inherent realisation that we are two and the same and our ideals are under threat. What does the future hold for Anglo-American relations? As Boris and Joe Biden bump fists in the Oval Office, are we still BFLs? Today, we really need to talk about the special relationship. <laughs>